question. What do you think these people are running away from? Stay with me and we are going to find out the answer together in just a few minutes. Professor Hello! Hello, hello! I am Professor Propeller. And my name is Y. Yes, yes, this is Y the Fly. In this video we will learn about some Spanish artists such as Salvador Dali, we will visit some cool places like Barcelona, take a quick peek at some Spanish theme parks including Puerto Ventura and try some Spanish food. I will even tell you where you can have a food fight in Spain. What? A, a food fight? Yes, it's a huge one, so don't go flying off if you want to hear more about that. But first, let's learn some geography facts about Spain. Spain is a beautiful country. It's usually quite hot and sunny. Our world has seven areas of land called continents. Spain is on a continent called Europe. The capital of Spain is called Madrid. Ah, oh, I've been to Madrid. I tried a sandwich there with fried squid in it. There's a restaurant in Madrid called Sobrino de Botón. It's about 300 years old. Yes, it's the oldest restaurant in the world. Let's hope the squid sandwiches in Madrid are not 300 years old, hey? Well, they might have started to stink by now. Oh, hey. Spain has some incredible artists. Very forward-thinking and exciting with some rather bizarre results at times. Salvador Dali is very famous and very recognisable. Why? Mainly recognisable because of his long moustache. Ah, I do love a good moustache. He made paintings, statues and even films about dreams he had. His most famous work is called The Persistence of Memory. It features melting clocks. Dali's art is what is known as surrealism. What is surrealism? Surrealism is a type of art that is like a door between our mind's reality and fantasy. Kind of like dreams. We might see real memories while we dream of people and places we know. But we also see weird things that we have imagined that are not real. So, in the whole of Spain, there's just one good artist? Oh, no. Spain has some amazing artists. Give me a minute. Pablo Picasso was another Spanish artist. Picasso was amazing at painting, even when he was a child. He had his first art exhibition when he was just 13. Wow, that's amazing! Not bad, huh, you scruffy little fly? Picasso was one of the creators of an art movement called Cubism. Now, What's cu Cubism? I, I was just about to tell you until you interrupted me. Oh, sorry, Grumpy. Cubism is kind of like making a painting, but just by using shapes. This type of art shows the world around us in a different way. Picasso did not think art should just copy nature and he wanted to show the difference between a painting and reality. Sometimes it's easy to see what cubist paintings are meant to be, like these three musicians. Sometimes it's a little harder. This is supposed to be someone's head. Another very creative person from Spain was called Antony Gaudi. He was an architect and some of the buildings he designed are incredible. You can see lots of Gaudi's buildings in the city of Barcelona. You can visit his house. It looks so colourful. I would love to buzz around this place. Balconies that look like cats, wonderful winding staircases and even a rooftop garden. The whole house seems to flow and excite in a natural but unique way. Would you believe that Gaudi designed this house more than a hundred years ago? What? A hundred years? It looks so modern and magical, yet it's probably even older than Professor Propeller. Cheeky! Also, in Barcelona, you can see what is probably Gaudi's biggest project. It is called Sagrada Familia. This is a huge church. At the time of making this video, this church is still not finished. It was started nearly 150 years ago. It is supposed to be completed very soon, so maybe if you go to Barcelona, you might be able to see the finished building. If you do plan to go, check the links in the description below for up-to-date details and fun places in Barcelona for kids. 
One great place near Barcelona is Porta Ventura World. This is a giant theme park with some of the best roller coasters in the world. They even have a Sesame Street area where you can meet characters and go on rides. Hey, you still haven't told me what those people are running away from. I know, they can hear you singing in the shower. No, it's even worse than that. Keep guessing, I'll tell you the answer very soon, I promise. Spain has some other great theme parks for families to visit. Terra Mitica near Benidorm has some great kids rides, but you can also learn about history in a fun way while you're there. Also, nearby is a water park called Aqualandia. In this hot sun, you probably need a swim to cool off. Who's hungry? Me! I'm always hungry! Well, Spain has some great food. Paella is a famous rice dish, often with chicken and seafood in it. My favourite is Serrano ham. You see this all over Spain. I also love chorizo, which is a spicy sausage. They make a nice sweet dessert called churros. These are a really yummy snack. They taste a bit like donuts covered in sugar. I know what those people at the start are running away from. You're cooking. <laughs> no, but nice try. In Spain, they have lots of small plates of different food all at the same time, like little snacks. This is known as tapas. Tapa means top or cover. It is believed that tapas was created by bartenders in Spain putting plates on top of drinks as lids to keep flies out. Then they started putting little snacks on top of these. Speaking of food, you promised me a food fight. Okay, well, once a year, in a Spanish town called Buñol, they celebrate a festival called La Tomatina. People come out into the street and throw tomatoes at each other. What? Why? You must be joking. No, I am not joking. They throw tomatoes until they are wet, soggy and covered in red juice. A very colourful but messy festival. Hmm, the biggest food fight in the world. I would love to go. I bet you would. Once you're cleaned up, how about some flamenco dancing? What's flamenco dancing? It is a very famous Spanish dance in traditional Spanish costumes. The music is similar to what you can hear now. It has acoustic guitars, singing, clapping, foot stamping and castanets. Bulls are very important in Spain. The Spanish word for bull is toro. You can see the shapes of them lots around Spain, on drinks bottles, even big silhouettes on the hills. In Spain, they have a sport called bullfighting. A person called a matador gets in a ring with a bull in front of an audience. The bull gets teased, poked with swords and has a horrible time. It is not nice and lots of people are trying to make it stop happening in future. The matador uses a red cloth called a muleta to tease the bull and make it run around. You might hear people saying that bulls run towards red things. This is not true. Bulls cannot see colour. They see everything in black and white. The movement of the cloth is what makes the bull run towards the matador and not the colour. This is not a sport. It is not a fight. It is just a person being cruel to an animal for no reason. I hope it stops very soon. There are lots of much better, wonderful things to see in Spain instead. So, last chance before I tell you. What are these people running away from? I give up. Really. I can't imagine what could make that many people run like that. The answer is... Bulls! Bulls? Once a year, in a city called Pamplona in Spain, they have a festival and part of it has become known as the running of the bulls. Bulls are let out to race up the streets. People can be badly hurt. It looks like a bonkers event. Well, I feel like I know a lot of facts about Spain now. Well then, you'd better fly down the page and hit the like button just below. What's this red button? Subscribe. 
Yes, you might want to hit that one as well. See you again, no doubt. Why the fly? Bye! And bye to you at home as well.